Hallo, Michael Adams für Stock Telegraph. Und äh, ja, wir haben äh, Dienstag, den 1. November, äh, Feiertag hier in äh, Köln jedenfalls. Und ich bin auf dem Weg. Morgen früh fahre ich ja dann nach München zur Edelmetallmesse, die am Donnerstag und Freitag diese Woche sind. Und äh, ja, da unten sehen Sie schon mein ganzes Kamera-Equipment auch schon aufgebaut. Und ja, bin jetzt so in den letzten Zügen. Wollte aber kurz noch, weil es von Health Space Data Systems äh, gab es gerade in den News, dass man einen neuen CEO an Bord gebracht hat. Äh, und zwar, ich kann es wahrscheinlich nicht aussprechen, ich habe aufgeschrieben, den Peter Smyrniotis. Ja, hört sich sehr griechisch an. Ähm, ja, und mit dem wollte ich jetzt vorab auf jeden Fall noch mal ein kurzes Video-Interview drehen. Ähm, dass er mir, ich hatte die Hells bis ja irgendwann schon mal auf die Watchlist vom Stock Telegraph gesetzt, aber äh, ihnen sonst noch keine größeren Informationen geben. Das wollte ich jetzt mit diesem Interview nachholen, was ich dann wahrscheinlich am Mittwoch, äh, bevor ich wirklich nach München auf die Autobahn gehe, ähm, noch mal veröffentlichen werde. Und ähm, ja, Hellspace, also äh, notiert an der äh, CSE, Canadian Stock Exchange, das Symbol ist HS. Und die deutsche WKN habe ich mir auch geschrieben, das ist die Anton 2, Anton Bertha Emil 4. Und ja, jetzt gleich ist es soweit und ich wünsche Ihnen viel Spaß bei dem Interview. So Peter, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to me um, and give me an, uh, yeah, some introduction to the company. Now, this is a really special day for you. Um, the company just announced uh, that you became the CEO, is that right? It is indeed, and uh, thank you very much for having me and making the time to speak with me. I'm actually very excited. I've had the privilege of being here with Healthspace for a little more than six months as right. their chief commercialization officer. Uh, which fundamentally meant that during that time, I had the opportunity to work with all different divisions of the company, um, watch it evolve from one state to its very active on-point state. Right. And um, through the buy-in of everyone on the team um, and assembling some new resources to help kind of capitalize the, the future momentum of the business, which sounds very corny, but fundamentally means that we're on the balls of our feet, we're throwing punches where we need to go, means that I'm excited to be here because we have a great opportunity in front of us. And frankly, um, I like what we're doing and I'm really excited about the opportunity because we, when, do, when we do everything correctly, our technology saves lives. And, right. and, that's, and that's powerful. You know, I mean, it sounds corny, but, but I mean, I've got kid sisters. Uh, I'm sure people have kids out there of their own and the idea of someone getting sick, getting a, getting a taco is just odd to me. Yeah, no, it's it's really when I when I was introduced to um, the business model and the company a while ago. Yeah, I really liked it, um, but there was some some bricks were missing in the wall to me. Yeah, before I can really um, start recommending the company to my subscribers and viewers. Um, but let, to start off, we can talk about the company uh, um, when we're a little bit more into the into the interview and about the the market potential, the technology. And, but but let's start off with giving some background about yourself. Sure. A um, little context of myself. Uh, I grew up in the city of Toronto here in Canada. I spent, I'm the son of uh, two serial entrepreneurs. Uh, my parents were, which you'll find interesting, gives me a bit of tie into health space, were uh, restaurateurs. So I have a pretty intimate understanding of the kind of client base that health space services. Um, I had the privilege <laughs> of being the son of an entrepreneur, which meant, you know, washing dishes, cutting carrots in a very, very early age. And uh, getting that strong, good work ethic that most, uh, the most families uh, that immigrate do get. Um, I was very grateful for that opportunity. Um, while working in, the, in, in that space, um, I found myself to, uh, going to the University of Toronto. I studied a variety of things. Uh, went into a little bit of technology, studied uh, anthropology, took uh, some zoology as well, and, and enjoyed it all. But my real, uh, my real exciting moment for me, and it's, again, kind of serendipitous to what we're talking about here, was that in the, in the summer of 1997, I, was, I applied to it for an opportunity to work with a company called Magna. Uh, Magna is a big uh, Canadian OEM supplier for automotive distribution. And I was afforded an opportunity to go live in uh, Germany. And uh, during the 1997 through the late summer of 1998, um, I got exposed to what real life looks like, no more student living. Um, it was a very interesting time because during that period of time, it really forged my my sense of perception of what business and technology could do together. It was the heyday of SAP deploying their R3 technology for logistics. 
I was there when SMH Swatch and Daimler Benz, uh, or correction, Daimler Chrysler had launched the smart car in Hamburg, France. Um, I got a crash course in logistics from SAP. I had an opportunity to work with uh, some special vendors, uh, including companies like Cosworth and uh, McLaren on contract. I got to go to Hockenheim and CF1 races with people who knew what cars were doing, you know, and uh, it was great. And I made the mistake of, uh, of cheering Nigel Mansell in a Ferrari squad. So that was a bad afternoon. Uh, <laughs> but all kidding aside, um, myself outside of that, I spent the last uh, 15 to 16 years working in enterprise technology. Uh, and back in 2011, I made a decision to go work in startups, uh, which didn't last long in that. I, the things I learned about how to respect and be a good steward of capital and how to treat and source high quality humans and, and professionals to work with us um, really correlated to respecting the, the difference between a startup and a venture. And a venture is enabled. It's got maturity. It's got focus. There's, uh, there's, there's drive. It's cross-generational. And in the last few years, I've been providing um, commercialization and technology consulting, enabling tech companies to grow. Um, I'm very fond of this. I love working with smart, capable people. And currently, I can tell you that um, I love what I do. Uh, I get up in the morning, and I love tech. I love sales. I love finding the next generation of young, hungry professionals and enabling them to go out there. And I hope they're gunning for my job as I was gunning for my forebearers' jobs. Okay. But out, outside of that, um, I hope that gives you a little context of myself. Yeah, no, that, that really sounds good. And it's an impressive background. Yeah, all the, all the companies you mentioned where you work, all your experience. And I think probably what, that's what, what the company really needs. Yeah, so to me, just from this first, and that's our first contact right now, sure. uh, it seems that you're like the right guy at the right company, right place at the right time. So anyway. May I share, may I share a comment to your question? Sure. Just, just a quick comment. Um, I always kind of picture things a little bit like a Venn diagram. I tend to visualize things. So it's difficult in, my, in with health space to not be very cognizant of the fact that the cloud-based product, cloud-based data initiative, cloud-based integration into a mobile strategy, tie that to a team, including myself now, and a new sales professional who's come on board, a former SAP uh, senior sales pro who basically specialized in food and beverage and health and data. So combine that with, with a track record of like not having lost a customer to date, it's, it's a great opportunity and frankly it's it's a very stable business so the foundation is really firm which means you know we're, i'm gonna go have to have to go out of my way to make a lot of poor choices to not make this thing successful and and frankly you know i'm not going to do that it's not something that i that i take anything less than lightly i, I mean this is something that's very important so i thought for purposes it's kind of like the holy triangle right product tech finance it's all ready to go yeah now actually that's what what kind of attracted me is that you have Actually, it's an old industry, yeah. Like, but but you're using this new technology and methods, yeah, to make everything smoother, easier, faster, cheaper, better. Yeah. So let's let's talk about. Um, yeah, you already gave some some um, basic information about the company, but maybe if you can give us kind of the elevator pitch in like thirty seconds, what Health Space is all about, like for all the guys that so far don't know the company. Sure, um, I can answer that very easily. Uh, what Health Space does is deliver real-time analytics and services to, at the outset, government organizations that investigate and inspect uh, where food intersects with people. Uh, we also deal with an additional set of services where we monitor things like water with uh, sewage. We allow inspectors for health authorities and counties, municipalities, states, federal organizations to take at the outset to go out there and basically ensure that the population that they service is safe, secure, and that the places that interact with people are being monitored and tracked and then being, and being uh, if you will, strategically managed so that they understand that they have to keep stay on point. Um, we, you know, it's simple. We, as a population, you can't afford uh, foreign vectors coming into your, into your population and getting people sick. I mean, there are organizations here in North America that have had, you know, examples of E. coli poisoning and so forth. And these things are primarily preventable. I mean, whether it's coming from the food safety processing facility, at some point it's going to hit a kitchen. It's going to hit a floor. It's going to hit a table. You know, things happen. Pests, pests get into environments. All this stuff is inspected and tracked by governments. And our technology is an example where fundamentally most technologies do one of two things. They're either 10 times better than what's come before or they're disruptive. And what's interesting about health space is, as you said, it's a business that's a little, more, a little older than a decade. 
And during that period, you know, what we do is we replace the clipboard, we replace the spreadsheet with a mobile strategy, but our disruption uh, is forthcoming. Our disruption is that we allow commercial organizations to be able to take that same auditing technology that the government uses so they can be proactive. So they're not just getting an inspection once a month, once a quarter, semi-annually, they can be on top of their own management. Um, that's exciting because I mean, it, it, it's a simple solution that, that enables businesses to take more custody and control of their own destiny and, and, and responsibility to their uh, community. Yeah, and actually, you know what I really like about this? As you said, yeah, so far, or in the past, a lot, over the last decades, yeah, there was all these inspectors running around yeah, into the restaurants and, and had their check marks on paper. Then they sure. went back into their office and punched everything, I don't know, yeah, probably on the computer. And then it took them way longer and there was like a, a very high probability of mistakes and nobody besides the government really had access to this data. So um, that's a business model on its own, just to replace this process by technology but on top of this and this is what i really feel is, is interesting and might be a little bit hard to understand for a european or especially german-based investor um, is that you are able to kind of use this data and sell it to third parties because in germany i guess the legal environment the data protection stuff is, is a little bit more complicated uh, but there's in in, in the in, in north america you have the house called the freedom of information act or whatever it is called right so right. you can really use this information yeah which actually you don't pay for gathering it, yeah, someone, mm -hmm. your clients actually pay for using this to gather the information that later on you can use and market to someone else. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely one of the mechanisms. Can I, yeah. can I speak to that for a minute? Yeah. Uh, an example that I would find interesting is, uh, it's, it's actually, I can localize it to your, to, to Germany if you like, as an example. So hypothetically, if you have uh, a region, say you're in Niedersachsen and you're down in, I don't know, Hildesheim and you're there and and the regional health authority or the, or the municipality is inspecting all the bars and restaurants and places where food is, food is served to people, among other things. There are other more, I'm using this as a topical example. Say that's going through and all the data is categorized, captured digitally and stored on a, on a cloud and it's managed. The data in, in that scenario in North America is, is published by the states or the federal government. It's, it's made available on a variety of different pieces of legislation. And we, as the mechanism that delivers that, are able to take that same data and then utilize that data and provide an insightful set of capabilities to service and deliver that data to different parties within the ecosystem will find value in it. There are potential organizations such as, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned earlier, there are pest control organizations that could want to maybe look at what's going on currently, say, what is happening this autumn? Maybe there's a higher, higher issue around pests that are you know, rodents, or maybe there's an issue around water being, uh, being infected differently. Another example are insurance companies. You know, they may see value in what, what's, what we're doing there as well. There's other opportunities where they, these insurance companies can take a look and go like, look, we have to make sure that we're giving the best possible rates to our customers who are taking care of their environments. We should reward good auditing. You know, if you run a clean type family business and you're getting good scores, your insurance rates, I think, should reflect that. And we can enable those organizations to, to service their customers better. We can also provide our data to aggregators. There are a lot of data sets out there that are, if you will, 90%, 80%, 70% complete. And when you overlay our data sets into their data sets, it enriches the picture, right? So I'm really excited about the fact that we have identified over six to seven um, very specific tar uh, targets in terms of the market, they'll find value and have identified themselves, and in many cases, self-identified that there's value in that, in what we have to offer through our uh, health space data platform. And we are really excited about the fact that we cut our product development time by almost a year by connecting with a, a global strategic partner uh, named Kabula and using their state-of-the-art technology to service our interests and theirs. And they've been a really great partner to work with. Uh, they've enabled us to cut product <coughs> development time to provide a best-in-class solution to customers, and they've been a, a, a delight to work with. And our product development team has been very, very successful in rapidly deploying our technology, so we can start taking it out. And in fact, we, we have already begun our active engagement in the market as of this past week, and we'll be going into November actively delivering this service and making it available to customers. Okay.
No, it's again, it's really, really interesting. And um, yeah, let's talk about your existing customers because you're you're one of the companies, and that's also something I like. Yeah, it's not that you're kind of starting and try to get clients. Yeah, you already have customers, clients, however you call them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, what's what's the plan to outroll? Yeah, to get it. Yeah, over the because your your focus market right now is the United States and Canada. Is that right? Correct. Okay, and how are you going to roll it out to even more clients? And um, second question would be, is there kind of a more international strategy yeah, going into South America or other places? Michael, that's a very good question. Thank you for asking. Um, I can basically summate this that what our strategy for taking our technology to market entails is based around our three product categories. Um, you're familiar with our HS Cloud Suite, which is a technology that is cloud and mobile enabled that allows organizations and government to service and maintain their populations and communities by monitoring the health and well-being of their uh, of the organizations that service them uh, that service them locally, and service food, beverage, food, water, sewage, and so forth. The new piece of business is that that same technology platform made available to government organizations, we've identified and have gone got very, very positive early traction with non-government organizations, commercial enterprise organizations, who in many cases want the same technology with exactly the same interface, with the exact same inspection profile, so that if you're in a town or city and your government is monitoring how your local community services food, and you're a food vendor or provider, and you want to basically be sure that you're actively providing the same kind of high quality services and you don't want to be caught unprepared, you can purchase our software and utilize it to the same effect. Secondly, we can take our same software and we are currently through a product uh, user experience, user interface refresh. Uh, we're putting a, pushing out a very, very beautiful new interface with frankly, uh, low touch points, easy to use functionality, and this one-two punch combined with our strong functional background allows us to take this to commercial enterprise organizations who are actually being monitored. So that if an organization has 15 locations and they're being monitored in five different territories, they can use our software, which will allow them to monitor all 15 of those locations in multiple territories, monthly, weekly, quarterly, so that they're always a step ahead of government insight and observation. This is helpful for a number of reasons. One, it allows them to manage their internal business managers at different locations to ensure that quality control is there and being serviced. Secondly, it allows them to be ahead of whatever government legislation uh, changes. So if the records get changed or inspection profiles change, we can update those on the fly so they have access to that same information. And thirdly, in the scenario where they have 15 locations and hypothetically half of those locations are franchisees, it allows them to ensure that their brand quality and control uh, is being respected and monitored by the core business and the franchisees at both sides of that equation. It allows everyone to have the same data and insight and ultimately, data without insight is not valuable. So that's the first piece. Uh, commercial enterprise is the second piece. And finally, the third piece, of course, is our data play. And we are basically taking our data into the US, into the US states, across America, from coast to coast. We're also doing this actively in Canada. We have real-time data, historical data, on what's actually transpiring across uh, Canada at large. I would anticipate that by the end of 2017, we will have enough preliminary information gathered on buyer behaviors that we'll be able to target probably two or three specific foreign markets. Uh, I think a logical extension, of course, would be working with the National Health Service out of uh, the United Kingdom. Um, it's a logical extension. Canada being part of the Commonwealth makes it very easy to enter, enter the government there at large. Um, I can tell you for a fact that if there's a, any G8 country that monitors and tracks this, already has these processes in place, which allows us to take our proven processes, proven strategy, and then roll that out territory by territory. Mm -hmm. However, I would, be, I would be out of line and frankly, uh, out of speaking out of turn if I suggested to you that we have a you know, 2018 plan to go into four countries. That would probably be uh, a little foolish. We wanna make sure that between managing North America's expectations that the next market we roll into, it's a, it's a proof of concept, and we, the things we learn in that in the UK allow us to roll into Scotland, into Ireland, and from there, hit the mainland of Europe and roll into that territory as well. Does that give you the kind of insight you were looking for? Yeah, no, that, that's really, um, I think, good. What, what I would uh, be interested in hearing is about a couple of the uh, clients actually right now, like the names of the, of the clients, the towns, the government organizations, whatever uh, it is, that are already paying clients. 
Sure. Um, first thing I can share with you is that we have a number of client profiles available on our website. So any of our uh, customers or investors can feel free to take a look or see what our track record entails. Um, I'm happy to provide you with one Canadian, one U.S. just here for the purpose of our conversation. One of our longest running customers is the Virginia Department of Health. This organization has been with us for a very long time. Uh, I think to the best of my knowledge, going on over a decade now. Uh, and I'll have to double check that. It's my first day, so don't hold me to it. No worries. Uh, that, but that being said, one of the most interesting things about uh, working with them has been our ability to tangibly provide high quality services to our existing technology platform. And the things we have learned working with that organization have helped fuel the product development choices and decisions that have uh, gone into our new HS cloud suite and HS data suite. When you work with a customer of a state size that's that large and that sophisticated and that is actively and uh, working and committed to doing what's best for their population, it allows us to kind of gather the right kind of uh, learnings to be able to build better technology. And what I'm excited to say is that, you know, going into that business, it has allowed us to take what we've learned with them and showcase that to other customers at the state level across the U.S., and they've been a pleasure to work with. Uh, another organization here, uh, here in Canada, for example, would be the Vancouver Coastal Island Health Authority. Uh, Vancouver Island is, if for, I have a uh, sneaking suspicion that many of your, uh, your German investors have on occasion come out to British Columbia here in uh, Canada. I tend to see you guys out in the wilderness a lot when I'm hiking myself with my dog and my girl. And one of the things I love is uh, British Columbia's island, Vancouver Island, is stunning. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place to go. It's, I'm not trying to twist this into a tourist conversation, but I, but I can tell you that there's great places to eat, great places to stay, uh, hotels to visit, and all of those places have been monitored actively by our, by our software and services for some time. So track record of people being looked after and enjoying themselves safely, whether it's locals or tourists, I think that track record speaks to itself. I mean, everywhere you go in, in British Columbia, our license plays, plays only say one thing. It's supernatural, right? It's, it's stunning to be here. And while you're here enjoying yourself, you should be able to put your head down, enjoy a meal, and feel safe about doing that. So that's another example. Right. Yeah. And I, unfortunately, I have to admit, I never made it outside like uh, two miles from Howe and Pender, right? So <laughs> that's, I've been to Vancouver a couple of times, but yeah, all, only downtown. So I definitely have to go to Vancouver. Then, then, with all, then with all sincerity, Michael, the next time you're in town, if you'd like to bring a pair of boots, we'll, we'll hit the North Shore. I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring an old sheepdog and we'll have a good hike up the mountains. <laughs> Sounds cool. Thanks. Thank okay. Um, let's talk about the, the revenue potential. Yeah. Now, now we have, I, I, I guess I understand yeah, where are the sources of revenue. Yeah. But what, what could be a potential or is there any official guidance for 2017 on the revenue side? Yes, there is. Um, to date, we are cruising at about $2.6 million of uh, top line revenue from existing clients at the state level. Uh, and the team that has been in place to date has done an excellent job of delivering those clients high quality services and delivering value across the board. Uh, further, what we can attest to is that with the launch of our HS Cloud Suite in the last uh, 35 to 45 days, we have a new product platform with a new pricing thesis and we have a mobile strategy which allows us to not only work with our existing technology, but with competitors' technology as well. Uh, having the only mobile play means that if a customer is not receptive or is, uh, doesn't have the budget or funding available to, to re rip and replace their existing technology, they can use our mobile technology to integrate directly into their services to better enable what they're already using today, which is great. I mean, in some cases you're gonna compete, in some cases you're gonna collaborate. I think being transparent about that in the marketplace is a good way to address things. I mean, transparency tends to drive good choices. Outside of that on the data play, um, historically, Data is, and it's, it's interesting to say, but data is basically worth zero or priceless, depending on what it is to whoever. And the, the powerful thing is we know to date through our early data testing and preliminary conversations with select customers and through working with us uh, and partnerships that we have the opportunity to bring our data to customers. And you can sell, historically, you can sell software-based data for four times, which you can usually sell uh, the software that underpins it. So if you're selling one license or say a block of licenses for 10 for one customer and the value is X, well, the data equivalent sale will be four times X. So, and that's great because you can sell it as a, as a SaaS, you can sell it as a term. Um, and there are organizations that are, you know, have, you, I'm sure here, you know, without name dropping too many national organizations, I don't want to speak out of turn, but there are places that serve coffee from coast to coast. They would like to have that kind of data to make sure that they're on top of what's going on because they're okay. And there's places that serve things like pizza, right? 
you're, if you're servicing these kind of organizations, they're going to want to see what your data provides. And our pricing is very competitive, offers fantastic value to customers. Regarding new top line revenue, we are forecasting an additional $7 million of new top line revenue in 2017 on top of our existing sales. And to make sure that we achieve that, um, we were very selective in who we brought on board as our lead sales professionals. As I mentioned in one of my earlier comments, we have to take this very seriously. And I don't think a misstep is really in order. So we sourced a best in class uh, data professional from SAP who had done a great job there and afforded them the opportunity to come join us. And they selected to do so. And coming to our organization, they have hit the ground running, which again, is another cliche. But what it means is they've gone in four weeks from zero to a $350,000 forecasted pipe uh, of new sales rapidly. Um, okay. they, and, that's, and, and I'll speak candidly, and that's just in their preliminary three to four weeks of actual prospecting in one select U.S. territory. So if you want to sell in America, as, as the young man told me, he goes, you go, to, you go to Texas, you go big or you go home. And the thing is, is, Texas loves to eat, and we know where to take our services there. Texas likes clean water. We prioritize that as well. We, we genuinely care about working with organizations in the government level who really want to look after their populations. If they don't afford budget to, to, to buy and purchase and maintain software of this type, chances are they're not really taking the, the health of their citizens uh, you know, as a priority or they have other, for, uh, other circumstances working against them. But our number one priority is to make that top line revenue for our employees, for our investors. Uh, shareholder value creation is my fundamental responsibility. Uh, someone along, the, along my path in the last six months pulled me aside and reminded me that the share price is the healthy barometer of the health of the business. So I, I understand what that means. And actually, that's, that's good that you mentioned it because I have a conflict of interest. I'm a shareholder also in HealthSpace. Damn it! <laughs> you got me. Um, no, uh, just um, the market cap right now is something like five, six million, right? And if you compare that to what you just gave as guidance for 2017, I think um, the investor or the viewers can uh, do their own math that it's to me, and I can say that it's a very, attract, at a very attractive levels to buy in. Um, just to sum up for the, our first video interview, um, what's kind of the end game? So will you take over the world or will someone else take you over like one of the big companies like SAP or just if you take a, a look into the crystal ball, what could happen? You know, you know, it, it's, it's funny. Um, there used to be this, uh, this very sweet gypsy lady who worked outside of one of the villages I lived in. And uh, she used to do that whole crystal ball thing. And uh, I have to admit, in my 20s, I was foolish enough to, to play that game. <laughs> and I, and I, I always enjoyed, enjoyed that she always had the best wine to drink on, in the evenings. Regardless of that, uh, when I look into my crystal ball for health space, my primary um, objective is to grow the value, the health, and the sustainable impact of the business at large. What that means for us is that as we grow and achieve revenue targets that exceed expectations uh, in a consistent and quarterly fashion, that if businesses can be merged through consolidation and acquisition, we'll do it. We'll find them, we'll, we'll find value, we'll find alignment on technology, team, culture, and outcomes. And if that's in place, we'll buy them, we'll merge with them. And if it means that we have to evaluate a competitor or a potential partner and realize that they're not moving at the speed we are, then we'll supersede them and we'll move into their market and we'll do what we have to do to be successful at that pace. As a final outcome, the reality is we're a high growth tech company that has a backbone of more than a decade of solid technology servicing our customers. So the only thing that I would say that they would be really transparent at this point is that it really is a large, significant opportunity. And if someone comes knocking during our, during our soon to be historic flight into 2017, we will be happy to, to consider all reasonable and exciting offers. Okay. I think that was great. Let, let me try to sum it up and you can correct me if I put something wrong. Yes, so sir. we have a company that's trading um, SHS on, on the uh, Canadian stock exchange and it's also trading on German exchanges. The WKN number, it's a to a b e four. Um, we have a market cap of like five or six million. We we already have a steady business, yeah, or a steady revenue stream from the from the business that's bringing in uh, two million. We have a good financial prediction for twenty seventeen. Um, 
yeah, it's it's not a brand new startup. Yeah, what what HealthSpace is trying to do is they they are have this old industry, yeah, which is kind of government forced that it exists, and now they're applying new technology. But the the smart thing that I feel is that they make the clients, like the guys who gather the data, yeah, they are paying for the service, and the data that is gathered can then be sold to other third parties. That's just an example that comes to my mind. If I'm McDonald's in Ontario, or maybe I'm, I'm Burger King in BC, or I'm, what else, uh, a Kentucky Fried Chicken in Virginia, right? Yeah. And I would like to know as soon as possible if there's a problem in any of my restaurants, right? right. And so I would pay to get this information. And on the other hand, there's... Um, all the kinds of suppliers, yeah, that let's say I'm a producer of fridges, refrigerators, and I can, can go to, or I can get all the data on some of the restaurants in my area and see where they have a, a failure of their fridge and they need a new one and I can sell to them, yeah. And so um, Health Space has, has gets, gets from both sides, gets money from both sides, which to me makes it really fascinating. Um, there's no huge overhead, I think, as soon as all the stuff is, or all the, technology is there and everything is working out, it's really a scalable business. So um, I, I can only urge you, the, help, the, the website is healthspace.com. It's very interesting. There's a couple of more information on there. Um, yeah, that would be kind of my two cents. Yeah, maybe if you want to add some last words, Peter. First of all, that was a great summary. Uh, frankly, if you being here my first day, I'm probably going to play back this interview so I can make sure I learn how to say it after all people <laughs> did. But my final, my final last words on the, on the subject at large is this, is that taking the, the, the leadership position here at Health Space was a very easy choice to make. I'm excited to say that aside from the sun shining in on my face at the last minute to brighten up my day, that Health Space itself is an opportunity to take something that is battle tested and take all the learnings from it and frankly, do something significant with it. Take a cloud mobile data. I mean, these are not uncommon terms in technology, but to have them unified by a source data point and a proven customer profile, and then to take that existing platform and deliver it in every channel to new customers and buyers, it's a very compelling story. Um, I'm excited for the opportunity. I'm excited that I have the ability to work with the people I want to work with. I'm excited that I've been able to bring in new talent that has integrated with the existing uh, employees and have found, have found alignment. And frankly, we've got a great management team, uh, a lot of seniority, a lot of expertise. I've got a lot of support to make sure that I'm being, I'm given the right insights to provide the best possible value and to make the best decisions for this organization at large. So with your permission, my final word is I got to go make some money and I got to go get to work because we have a lot to do. That's perfect. So uh, thank you very much. I'm pretty sure that we are going to tape another video interview in the not so distant future. But for now, uh, good luck yeah, for new, your new uh, position. And um, yeah, talk soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. <laughs>